I am the one, I am the one Everybody talk My puns on my echo wood Then I love it gun I don't need to stun Cause I am the one I do this for fun I do this for fun I am the one, I am the How's it going people? Welcome back to the channel I am here Bringing you back the pro show And who better than the one The pioneer, the man that started the pro show The man who is the inspiration behind the pro show So I figured You always go back to where you belong And you always start with number one So please allow me to welcome my guest, my brother from another mother, the one, the only, the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Jose Camilden, how are you, sir? I'm good, and yourself, Devin? I'm always well, always well if I see you. Glad to have you back, my brother, I really appreciate you jumping on. Yeah, it's always good to be back in the hometown and catching up with some old friends and catching up about my football career and obviously catching up with how your podcast is going. Thank you, appreciate that. And of course, I'm joined by an esteemed co-host, of course, you might have seen a lot of your collaborations, so you guys wanted it. We figured we might as well give you more some, some of that um, chemistry that we've got. So without further ado, allow me to introduce my co-host, the one, the only Total Tight Talks. How are you doing, my G? I'm doing good, buddy, and it's a blessing to be back on the podcast <laughs> again today. It's been a while. It feels like ages. It has been a bit too long, actually. Mm, you pick up point? Huh? You look good though. You look good though. The winter weather is coming off now. He's <laughs> eating iron. <laughs> Pumping the iron. But without further ado, people, you know what to do first and foremost. Like the thing, share the thing, subscribe to the thing, link to Total Tight Talks will be in the description below. So before you do anything, slap a like on the video, it helps boost the content from both sides. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. Mr. Hamilton, how have you been settling in? You are the real AM now, have you been settling in that side? Uh, you... Look, Devi, uh, I've, I've been around, I've been to different provinces, but um, it's it's different to to the rest. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm settling in Marysburg, we're staying at the ranch, mm -hmm. like it's... The treatment has been good for players and coaches and the president and the chairman himself. But yeah, we we I settled well with a good bunch of players, mm -hmm. very talented group. Of course. Um, and yeah, like I said, it's very different, but I'm adapting well and I'm focusing and challenging myself to just focus my mind on the reason why I'm there mm -hmm. and just trying to pull out good performance each and every week. Sure we can see the numbers don't lie. If I might ask, what are your goals and objectives for the season for yourself and for the team as well? Okay, let me start over the team. Mm -hmm. Obviously, with the team, we wanna wanna duplicate the season we had um, um, last season, where they finished third, and hopefully we can finish a bit higher. But we started we started quite well, mm -hmm. and it slipped towards the end where we lost three in a row. But that was also the the time when we went like we lost our coach, and you know we had to play calf games in between. Mm -hmm. So hopefully for myself with the, with the team, I would like to finish in the top four, mm -hmm. if we possibly can, and which is possible. Is possible. And for myself, I would like to to finish or end the season on maybe eight to ten goals, and then take it from there. Like a I have to ask this question: like, like the, the best part about your career is that there's been some ups and downs at the beginning, but like it's really gotten steady over the past few years, especially. So like when you look back and you think and you think like like like, like, well, like when you just started off and you were getting out of Santos and stuff like could you look at where your career is now and think wow like this is like, like, like this is the trajectory it would have like it would have gone to like like to be honest with you Ty, we, we were all young we all um, you know got a, made a bit of money fame you know got into the wrong things and which set me back a bit but luckily I. I reshifted um, re my mindset and I started focusing on what needs to be done and thank all thanks to God that um, I'm still playing and healthy and injury free. So what set you apart from the others was the mindset basically because that is something that a lot of the footballers of today do struggle with just that 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 focus of what I need to do that's best for my career that's basically what set you apart. Like 80% is your mindset because like at the end of the day is you can only control what you can control and if you find yourself in a bad space only you can take yourself out so if you don't help yourself who's gonna help you i like that i like that sure i've got a question um you spoke about the calf um tournament that you guys that you guys are looking to reach i want to touch on recently when you went to tp mazembe so there was a lot that came in the media of course what the conditions and how you guys were treated and that type of things look you don't have to go too in detail 
Would you mind elaborating on that for me? Like the, like um, conditions wise. Like Africa is different. Of course. Don't expect your the same treatment you get in South Africa. Even like the way South Africa is established, like you won't find that in other countries. Like it's very there's a lot of poverty, and like one thing about the African countries. Not saying that we're not African. Mm. Like um, they support the team, the local team. Like the, the stadium was sold out. Like, sure. like when we arrived there, like from the airport all the way to our hotel, people were like saying tomorrow four no, tomorrow four no. Oh. Like everyone, every yeah. single one that saw our bus, Is they it? did that. And then like the con like the hotels was good was good enough, uh, but just the hostility like started at at the stadium. Like they were throwing, they were throwing water at us while we were warming up. Oh. Throwing water on the on the chair lady at in, oh. in the stand, like taking the the keeper's water in the, in the net, mm. like throwing the water out and throwing the bottle away. It, second off, they put blood on his on the, on his towel, like a, like that. That was just to distract us from the game mm. because like we, we 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 didn't play bad. We actually kept them for like until I think the seventieth minute when they scored. And then, like mm -hmm. in that, there was like a twenty minutes um, period where we they they just tried to like disrupt us, man. Jeez. You see, but like I say, Africa is not for for for, for the faint-hearted. Of course, it's it's really a different ball game, but um, it was a good experience because mm -hmm. we played in um, Swaziland and then we went to Zambia, mm -hmm. and then we played in Congo. Congo. And if we had to beat TP Mazembe, we would have qualified. Mm -hmm. That would have been history. Of course, but. But like I say, like like Congo really opened up our eyes to say like we we're not really who we think we are. Mm. So part of the, so part of the sabotage was it mainly just the fans of TP Mazembe or was it the players also? Were the players saying stuff on the pitch and just the fans, bro? Just the fans. I had no idea they got like that bad, yeah. like before the game. Like there was like these. 15 people they were like chilling in the VIP area just drinking yeah then once the game started they came down like to where the chair the chair lady was sitting and just started doing the things like dancing in front of her and, like <laughs> weird <laughs> stuff <laughs> and, like it was crazy I was I was warned by by Lau mm. he told me like don't leave your he told me like don't leave your phone in your in, in in the change room and stuff like that. And then your pass will leave it at the hotel Jeez. because apparently they send people to take your stuff. Sure. That is a mad thing. That's mad. Yeah. That's crazy. Let's come closer closer to home. This is the pro show. Um, before we come, I know you have a question to ask him as well. This is my last question, which I'll ask. Is Cape Town football dead? Because the reason why I'm asking it is we're seeing a lot of influx of Cape Townians eating. So I want to ask you, is Cape Town football dead? If yes, why? If no, why? In your opinion? My opinion, I would I won't, I won't say Cape Town football is dead because like you can see like Stellenbosch and City, they're mm -hmm. trying their best to like um, get the youth through mm -hmm. to the first team because if you can check the, 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 the DDC, mm -hmm. like both Cape Town teams are on top. Mm -hmm. And like that's a good thing to see obviously. But in my in my opinion, like I would say, like players of my time, like I feel like clubs started making, forcing them to just accept whatever they put on the table, of course, knowing yeah. that they don't have anywhere else to go. And I don't know why it's like such a how can I say? It's like a it's like an how, how, how can I put it? Feel pressurized under pressure. Like Cape Town, they know Cape Town players won't leave Cape Town. Of course, yeah. So Limited because options, because most of, the, because most of their families decide. Of course. So they they like say, okay, we're gonna give you two thousand. It's you. It's up to you. Take it or leave it. Mm. Knowing that that's not that's that's that's, that's, that's that's how can I say, like the potential that player has, mm. that's, that's to earn more maybe. 10,000 or fifteen thousand. Mm, you know? Of course. But I really like that causes like the down. The downfall of the quality in Cape Town okay. soccer as well, because like nowadays everybody's just going for the youngster that will accept the three thousand. Of course, you see. Gotcha. But that's just my opinion, mm. and I feel like there's, like there's a there's a lot of good players that left football because of 
that, of that situation. Yeah. Fair enough. So it's like, it's like a double-edged sword, basically. It's like it's, you get the players that are good enough to be getting more than 3,000 a month, uh, more than 3,000 contact, but at the same time, that's, what, that's, only, that's the only thing the club is looking for. The club yeah. is looking for players within that bracket. So now you have an unhappy player and you have, and you have standards that are way too low by the club. By the club. So it's actually... Oh, the oh. same player that you want to offer the 3,000 is maybe the breadwinner though. Of course. Ah. And then then they have this thing saying, yeah, um, like the whole football is being broke off the football. Mm -hmm. Like how are you supposed to, like, like how can so prepare can you, your future? How can you prepare your future? How can you oh, save? From a 3,000. Oh. Of course, facts. It's either you're working and playing, mm. but you can't make your primary focus just on football, yeah. of course. So then, do you still have any other questions? I'm not quite for now, you guys are doing other questions. I just, I just wanted to ask you this. So, you're getting to, to that time in your career now, where you have to start looking for other avenues after football. Like, like do you maybe have a look at, uh, like, like are, you, are you kind of looking at um, when, you, when the retirement date will happen? Are you looking to, okay... I can feel it. I can feel it in my body. Like I have this amount of years yeah. left. Are you? Are you? Is that something that you're thinking about now? I am definitely thinking about it. But then again, I also don't want to rush myself into, like, say, uh, maybe I want to coach or whatever. Mm. But now I don't want to rush it because I don't want to also do something that I don't have passion for anymore. Yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? So I'm just seeing out my football years, and then I'll probably find the answer once I feel my body has enough. Mm. But you definitely still have the fitness levels. I can see you eating it till like 39, 40, like yeah, a smart Like I, I'm trying to, to, to end up strong. Yeah. So the more contracts I can get until my expiry date, the, the better for me and my family. Oh. Yes. Like that, like that. Any advice that you could give youngsters right now looking to be the next reset from London coming from the Northern Suburbs? Uh, work hard, finish your school first, and just keep working hard, just re remain resilient and persevere through the up and down, because I know it's not easy living in Cape Town, mm -hmm. but yeah, just work hard, listen to your coaches, and someone will come fetch you one day. Once again, I have to say thank you, I appreciate you coming on, taking the time. To have a sit down with myself and Ty, and I would like to wish you all the best for the remainder of the season. And hopefully, next year we'll have another chat again. And Thank you, the pleasure is all mine, dear. And I, <laughs> anytime you can call me, I'll come through for Love, the I appreciate us. that, my bro. Well, yes, people, we've come to the end of the show. That's it, like I said. Um, slap a like on the bottom of the video. That's DVD TV. It's Total Thai Talks. And we are out here. Bless. I am the one I am the one